Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is the summary for the day of 555 for the 1st of September. Let's start off with uh, the Kupian's front. At the Kupian's front, we have uh, information coming from Raiba, the pro-Russian source, saying that the Russian forces has stopped their advance. They have uh, moved away from the tactical advance phase and moving into a positional phase. Uh, basically meaning that the Russian forces will be attacking uh, in place. They will not be moving forward anymore, but they will just be using artillery, airstrike, and drones. However, we still have uh, reports of fighting towards uh, Petropolivka or in the area of Petropolivka, according to Myra Shinikov, uh, the pro-Ukrainian source talking about him being concerned about the situation over at the Petropolivka region. Russian forces uh, probably are consolidating their lines currently uh, and uh, despite the stoppage, the Ukrainians still managed to hold Sinkivka. So uh, there, the Ukrainians actually successfully hold back the Russian forces, uh, essentially. And uh, it looks like the uh, Kupian's offensive has come to come to a close. And uh, moving on from the Kupian's front, at the Svetove front, at Novosadiske, we have Ukrainian Defense Ministry reporting Russians attacking from Novosadiske. Uh, this is uh, pretty unusual because we haven't seen a Russian uh, attack uh, being reported in this area since 11 of August. So around three weeks. And then we're moving down over at the situation at Novo Yehorivka situation is getting a bit intense for the Ukrainians. According to Deep State UA, the pro-Ukrainian source reported that heavy fighting is currently happening, uh, taking place in the northern part of Novo Yehorivka. And this is actually uh, words coming from the press service of the Eastern Group of Ukrainian Armed Forces. So uh, the Russian forces currently is making a push in the south of Sahievka, uh, in or towards the northern part of Novo Yehorivka. Currently, uh, what I believe is that the Novo Yehorivka is still under Ukrainian control or largely under Ukrainian control and the Ukrainian forces are currently holding back the Russian advance. This is uh, a maybe a diversionary or it could be a new vector of attack after the stopping of the Kupians offensive now they are pushing over here at the Novo Yehorivka region in the Svetove front over at the Crimea front we have fighting being reported at Toske according to the center group of forces of the Russian armed forces as well as within the Serebransky forest tree and uh, there is some news regarding uh, Russian forces over at the Crimea front uh, there is a redeployment being reported by pro-Ukrainian sources saying that Russian forces uh, have redeployed from Crimea all the way to the Robotine region over at the Orkhiv sector at the Zaporizhia front. And uh, this information comes from uh, pro-Ukrainian sources. Marushinikov and Dnipro Osin both has reported on this. Accordingly, uh, the redeployment includes the 234th, 237th and uh, 104th Air Assault Regiment, basically the airborne from the 76th Airborne Division, and uh, they are redeployed from Crimea to Robotine. So, uh, the the U Ukrainian sources claim this is the prob. Uh, this shows that the Russians have problems with uh, their reserve forces that is currently defending around this region here. So, and uh, with this also coincides with Russian forces re withdrawing from the southern part of Robotine. Uh, Pro-Russian sources have been uh, claiming consistently that uh, they have control of the southern part or at least southern outskirts of Robotine and they constantly are engaging with the Ukrainian forces inside Robotine uh, over in the southern part. They have been uh, exchanging uh, attacks on each other and uh, this time round uh, it looks like the Russian forces have decided to abandon the entire, entire uh, Robotine village and uh, they are moving south to their positions along the forest line which we pre which we have previously alluded to that the Russians are most likely holding their lines and uh, this also comes at the same time that the Ukrainians are making a major push on the eastern part of Novo Propokopivka according to pro-Ukrainian sources they say that the fighting is getting nearer and nearer to uh, Novo Pokopivka they are moving closer and closer and uh, it looks like the Russian forces might be doing a redrawal so that they can actually meet this uh, pushing this forces that is pushing from the east. 
so that they can actually uh, have a more consistent line, a more defendable line around Novo uh, Prokopivka. So this is a situation around this area here. There is a geolocation of uh, Ukrainian forces uh, at this position showing a destroyed T-72, which also confirms that the Ukrainian forces are currently at this position. They are trying to push this major uh, Russian defense line around here uh, based on the information has been coming out from the pro-ukrainian side it seems like they have not uh, entered the uh, defense line just yet they are very very close though uh, and uh, with the russian redrawal uh, over from robotine this actually shows uh, this actually conceded the settlement to the ukrainians so now we have the the first pro-russian uh, information conceding that the ukrainians have established full control over robotine so uh, this comes you no know, after a week or two uh after the ukrainians first declared they have captured robotine so this comes pretty late uh but it does shows that uh, the ukrainians have finally controlled robotine and this will uh, allow them to continue to make further push further south to Novo Prokopivka. The Ukrainian forces largely is now concentrating their effort towards Verbove uh, over here. And uh, the according to Raiba, since the morning of September the 1st, Ukrainians have been sending uh, several detachments to attack. Uh, but tentatively, they are unable to get closer to Verbove at all uh, because the Russians have kind of reinforced the line. And maybe this has something to do with the airborne forces that was reportedly uh, being sent over here this coral uh this reinforcement of the russian forces to this uh a this region here corroborates uh our suspicion uh, previously we have mentioned that the russian offensive over at the crimea front uh, have pretty much stopped we haven't really seen much about this uh russian push it had always it had entirely transformed into a pure ukrainian push around this area here uh, which I was like, thinking, you know, this is somewhat unusual. So we have our answer, uh, we have our question answered with the Russian making one big route over to the Robotine region to reinforce uh, this area here. And uh, I would say that it might not be just reinforced, it might actually be a counterattack uh, because these are airborne forces, these are assault forces. And these assault forces has been conducting assaults within the Serebransky forestry region. So um, so it could be, we could be seeing either a Russian uh, intense defending uh, of their defense line, or we might actually see the Russian go on the offensive. So, um, so stay tuned to see you know, what is going to happen over in this uh, front line as this region here is continues to be very, very uh, dynamic at this current juncture. Uh, we we have Maroshinikov also confirming uh, the fighting is still continuing on the outskirts of Verbove. Uh, tentatively, it looks like this entire, uh, this salient here is gone. It has been retaken by the Russian forces uh, from the, by the looks of it because no one really talked about it anymore. And uh, we move on to the Velika Nova Circle sector. Uh, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry made a very weird uh, statement saying that the Russian forces are conducting uh, offensive actions in the area of Vel Velika Novosilka. Velika Novosilka is here. So in the area, I'm not sure how big is there. You no, know, the radius of their area means. So um, the the likelihood that uh, the Russians are making some major operation uh, is pretty low at this moment. But we do have Maroshnikov claiming that some of these airborne forces is actually redeployed to this Starolimnivka region. Uh, so the, he claimed Volodyne, Staro Linivka and Kamenchai. So basically, is that uh, Bayashirikov is talking about this, this line here. This this is the line that the Russian forces is currently reinforcing, and uh, so we shall see if these actually have any relations with this uh, Ukrainian Defense Ministry claim that the Russians are conducting offensive actions in the Velikan Nervous Circle region although it is pretty far away Velikan Novosilka from the front line is like 10 kilometers so I do not think uh, the fighting is in this region uh, so no the Ukrainian defense ministry is a bit cryptic about this uh, there is however fighting being reported at Pryone a Vostok group of forces of the Russian defense ministry reported that the Ukrainian infantry group attacked uh, Pryone uh, however this did not break through so uh, that's all we know of this region here. There's no more fighting being reported in the 
Staro, Mayoski, and Uruzane region. Totally no reports of any fighting. And uh, we move into the Donetsk front. We have the usual fighting reported at Novo Mihailivka. Uh, the Russians are attacking. According to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, Marinka, we don't really have any much information except some claims uh, from Myron Shinikov talking about some fighting at Marinka. Uh, not worth really talking about. Uh, interest at the ADFK front is a bit interesting with the Ukrainian Defense Ministry talking about Russians attacking Germany. And we haven't seen a Russian attack on Germany for a very, very, very long time. So, so long that I don't even have a record of the last uh, last attack unless I dig through the old mappings. So we shall see. I think it's probably just a probing attack. Nothing much to talk about. Over at the Bakhmut front, at the Bakhmut front, the Ukrainian forces uh, seems to have not stopped their attacking. Uh, suddenly, there is no reports of Ukrainian attacks. Maybe it's a Saturday thing. I do not know. Uh, the the Ukrainian Defense Ministry only mentioned the Russians conducting offensive operation in the Kodyumivka region, talking about the Russians attacking in this area here. Suddenly, the entire Ukrainian offensive, all the way from Klishevka to Ozerenivka, is gone. The fighting around Mayos uh, is also not mentioned. So, uh, pretty, pretty bizarre. O over at the northern flank, uh, we do not have any reports of fighting as well. Uh, there is only a Joe location of a Russian tank uh, running into a mine, probably their own mine, uh, their own Russian mines, and uh, exploded. The, the soldiers escaped into the forest, and uh, this reported by Dnipro Osin. And uh, so that's all we know from this area here. And the and you, and the only one thing left uh, in terms of the front line action is the Russian defense. Uh, Russian forces were attacking at Bilohorivka. According to Myro Shinikov, the pro-Ukrainian sources talking about the Russians attacking Bilohorivka. And to be honest, if you actually remove Myro Shinikov, uh, which is actually our secondary source uh, information, this entire map will become even more sparse. There will, there will be even lesser information. This, this uh, lack of intel or you no know, frontline actions shows that the, the entire Ukrainian offensive or the Russian offensive, all the operations are currently, you know, in some kind of a pause, you know, getting very, very slow, except for the region of at Robotine is, that seems to be still very fierce. Otherwise, everything seems to be slowed down by quite a bit to the point where the Russian Defense Ministry did not launch, did not write a daily report. They actually write a summary of the entire week's action. So this actually shows how little action there was to the point where they actually have to do a summary of a week's action rather than a day's action. And uh, over at the Southern Front, um, the Ukrainian forces still have this uh this salient around here. Uh there is claims from the pro-Russian sources saying that they have bombarded Tachi to the point where all the Ukrainian forces are dead. I do not know that how true is that. And uh, there is still amphibious operation along the Dnipro River. Uh not really worth talking about in details because I don't think it means anything. Uh the Ukrainian forces also launched a surface drone attack against the Crimean bridge. Three different drones from 11.15 to 2.10 a.m. and 2.20 a.m. So in a span of around three hours, uh, three different surface drones were, try were trying to uh, hit the Crimean bridge. Uh, they were all intercepted and destroyed by the Russian forces. So this is reported by uh, the Russian Defense Ministry. So uh, pretty slow news day. And uh, that's all for the summary for the day of 555 for the 1st of September. Press the like button, subscribe, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next update.